Lucy Johnson. Good morning to you, Lucy. Um, one of the key lines to come out of yesterday as well was uh, more uh, testimony from uh, Dominic Cummings, which we had via Sir Patrick Valance, um, who was saying that Rishi Sunak had said, um, people will die and that is OK, that he was OK with, with that. It doesn't paint a good picture of the now Prime Minister, does it? Um, well, I think that is a headline grabbing uh, statement. But in fact, when you really look, I mean, obviously, all deaths, all lives are sacred and we should pre preserve life. But uh, the question is how it's about qu quality of life. And there are people who would prefer to have assessed their own risk and decided whether they wanted to live like that, whether they wanted to see family, whether they wanted to see children during those periods. And I'm, there are people that would question whether it's for the government to mandate that. And the, the inquiry itself is not going to be looking at the broader, lawyer-led inquiries are good at sort of asking what happened, uh, but they're not so good at looking at why it happened. It's not going to look at whether lockdown was um, evidence-based or the evidence for it, and it's not going to look at the unquantifiable harms of lockdown because that's too hard to do. So really, there's an inherent bias in there, and it's it seems to be at the moment a sort of mud slinging match and everyone's saying they're not to blame and blaming other people and it's hard to see how we can really learn lessons for the future and look at this about whether whether lockdown was the best way to go whether there was an alternative whether it actually saved lives it doesn't seem to be getting to the nub of those questions but if and when another pandemic comes our way, looking to the future, someone will have to decide what is going to be different. And the thing is, Lucy, I would suggest that there would be things uh, that they will have learnt from this inquiry that will not be repeated. Would you care to speculate on what those may be? Well, I mean, we the, the, the key question that lockdown is not going to look at is whether lockdown should have happened at all um, or whether we could have done a sort of more voluntary system as happened in Sweden, which had less deaths than us, which had less, has now less excess deaths. We have had this year uh, levels of excess non-COVID deaths running at similar levels to, to the year of the pandemic to, to 2020. So we, there's a massive collateral harm to lockdown. And this inquiry is, is actually not looking at that. And I think that is the essential question, really, that we need to learn and we will learn a lot about how bereaved families um you know suffered we will learn uh you know there are core participants who will explain their position and the scientists will take their position and they will say how they thought we should have done more often and they sh we should have gone harder and faster but that doesn't really answer the key question is that what would have happened had we followed an alternative and looking at the eat out to help out um i noticed patrick valance there saying yesterday that this would likely to have led to more infections in fact that has been looked at by scientists retrospectively and this is one of the things we need to do and we had similar levels of infections at that period, so it was the summer 2020, to other European countries who didn't have an eat out to help out. And in fact, Belgium had higher levels of infections at that time than we did. Um, Southwest Cornwall had a, a massive influx of people. We couldn't go abroad. I think there was a, 11 million people there and their infections dropped. So what seems obvious, what seems uh, intuitive is not necessarily you know, so it's not but necessarily. Why doesn't someone might... like Sunak then crow about that? Why doesn't he say, "Look, the evidence doesn't back up that I endangered anyone"? Well, you can't really say. It's, it's about how we live our lives, isn't it? It's about what we choose to do with them. If if we're saying that you know children should stay in their bedrooms, um, obviously their education was affected, but that prolongs the whole lockdown because 
they're not at risk, but they are uh, not getting exposed to the virus. So therefore, when they are uh, not locked up, they are slowly then having getting infected, so infections go up. It's, it's re it, the whole thing is very, very difficult to quantify, and it's not necessarily the case that SUNAC will have that kind of evidence. That just happened to have been looked at by a team of scientists, but, you know, there is no one paid to do that, no, but I'm, to I'm, look I'm, at that. In fairness, Lucy, I mean, his job was as Chancellor, wasn't it, was to try, you know, his job is to balance the books of the nation, and he was trying to help businesses at a time of huge crisis, and with retrospect, in, in retrospect, we can see that that really did help businesses at the time. Everyone called him Dishy Rishi, didn't they? Yeah, but, but, uh, for a while. but, but, but I just no, want to make no, a point. No, he out. can't. He can't be reckless. I mean, it turns out Lucy's saying that it, it, his policy wasn't reckless at the end of the day, but it could have been deemed to be reckless, yeah. and it's not up to him to kill people. Of course not. But I just want to make the point, and I thought it was really interesting that Sir Patrick Valance said this yesterday, so that there were tensions between him and Professor Chris Whitty. Although they worked well together, Professor Chris Whitty's role was more of a sort of holistic overview of health, and we know about the impacts. On cancer and the fact that hospitals were closed. And there were tensions because, of course, Patrick Valance's role was very much to control the virus. And so as far as he was concerned, businesses didn't matter, um, other medical issues didn't matter. His job was to look at the virus. And actually, in this inquiry, we are learning that the role of Professor Chris Whitty, and I'm sure we'll hear more of it today, was absolutely crucial to give that other perspective, the holistic look. I'm not sure what uh, Professor Whitty will say, but Poverty is deadly and mental ill health is deadly. Loneliness is de deadly. Um, our country obviously has taken a massive economic hit. So it's very difficult to look at things in isolation. If we were to spend, you know, sort of doctors, their job is to preserve life at all costs. And uh, the SAGE team was looking at that, was looking at it was it their job to stop infection but actually we also need to look at the collateral harms of lockdown because they too are deadly in the long run and quality of life for for example children mental health of children we have i think one in nine children at least who now has a mental health problem uh, actually it's one in six it was much lower before and what are their life chances life chances and economic and job prospects are linked to well-being, health, how you eat. It's a very, very difficult balance. And if we just decided to preserve health at all costs, we would we would not have any cars on the road, for example. Do you see what I mean? So, it, so as, as you were saying, you know, Rishi's job was, that, that is the job of a politician, to balance things up and to say, well, actually, we need to do something to help our economy. Uh, and that's what he did. And he, he looked at the evidence differently, as you said, rightly or wrongly. But that's what he was doing. He wasn't deliberately trying to murder people, I don't think. Well, fasc fascinating Ooh. stuff, Lucy, and it gets juicier all the time. Thank you very much indeed for your, for your take on things. Uh, Lucy Johnson is the Health and Social Affairs Editor at the Sunday Express. Thank you very much.